In the nearby royal palace, the official residence of Saxon rulers since 1485, is Dresden's historic Green Vault. This glittering Baroque treasure collection is the sightseeing highlight of the city. The collection was begun by Augustus the Strong, featured here surrounded by ancient Roman emperors on the base of an obelisk. It grew into the royal family's exquisite trove of ivory, silver, and gold treasures, displayed in rooms as opulent as the collection itself. Its purpose? A synthesis of the arts as an expression of wealth and absolute power. The amber cabinet shows off what you can do with fossilized tree sap. For example, this exquisite bowl from 1659. The ivory room does the same for elephant tusks, with some strikingly delicate carving. In this amazing ivory frigate, tiny sailors climb the gold wire rigging, all supported by Neptune and his horses. In the aptly named Hall of Precious Objects, amid mother-of-pearl, ostrich egg, and snail shell goblets, is the ultimate coffee service. This golden coffee service from 1700 is pure gold, iced with enamel, crusted with thousands of precious stones, and crowned by a coffee pot filled with symbolism. Coffee was exotic and trendy back then, and this extravagant centerpiece, while never actually used to serve coffee, certainly made an impression. This captivating ensemble depicts a grand mogul on his birthday. He ruled India when Augustus ruled Saxony. And among Earth's rulers, he was the embodiment of absolute power and endless wealth. Like royal Legos on a silver stage, the figures, made of gold and glazed with enamel, were movable for the king's pleasure. And the finale, in a place all its own, is this dazzling green diamond, one of the largest ever discovered. The adjacent royal armory fills a long room with centuries-old armor. The biggest space in the palace, this room was the scene of medieval war games. Today, its exhibits of jousting models recall those breathtaking pageants of the 16th century. Back then, jousting was something rich guys did when there was no war to fight. The collection offers an unusual chance to see armor not standing at attention, but displayed in action. This ensemble, designed for formal parades, not actual battle, is considered the prize of the collection. And the little princes needed their armor as well. 